Hello, I'm Butch from Barker Enterprises. Just want to say thank you for coming and checking out our site. Today we're going to make a, a short video on how to repair a large hole in drywall. Okay, to do this you're going to need a drill motor, a knife, this is like a 12 inch knife, but if you only have a 6 inch knife you can use that too. 12 inch one would be easier. You need a mud pan. If you don't have a mud pan, you can use a bucket or a bowl. You're going to use, need some sandpaper, or like I like to use a sanding block. You're going to need a level, a handsaw, an old scrap piece of wood that we'll put behind the drywall to support it. Anything will work, a 1x2, 1x4, 2x4, whatever you have available will work. You're going to need a pencil. Utility knife, a tape measure, a drywall saw or, or a keyhole saw, whichever you prefer to call it. I need some drywall screws, some water, and I like to use a 20 minute mud. You know, they make different kinds. They make 5 minutes, they make 20 minutes, they make 45 minutes. I like to use the 20 minute. Okay, we're going to start out by uh, go ahead and making a big hole. I made just a practice wall here. As you can see, that's a pretty nasty hole, pretty big. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get your level and your pencil, and you're going to set it on here. Level your level up. Make sure you're clear of all the loose debris so you have a nice solid surface. Get your line. Do the same thing on the other side, level it up, take the line, go across the top. You're going to do the same thing, you're going to level it up, and you're going to put yourself a line across there. Do it on the bottom. Okay, you see we've got a nice square. Now what I like to do is take my utility knife and scar it first and then cut it with my keyhole saw. Some people just cut it with the keyhole saw, they won't do this step right here. But I think if you do this step, you get a cleaner cut. See, that wasn't too hard to do. But what I like to do is you see you got a little bit of frayed edges. I like to cut them back a little bit so that way when you're dragging your knife across it later on it doesn't snag. So I just go on a slight angle, just cut them back, relieve them a little bit, clean them up. What you do is you take your tape measure now, measure your hole. We got a seven and a quarter by seven and a half. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our scrap piece of drywall we have we're going to measure it out. We're going to go seven and an eighth and seven and an eighth. And we're going to take our level, draw a nice line. If you haven't cut drywall, don't worry about it. It's very simple. Just take your line that you cut, take your knife, dig it in about an uh, eighth of an inch or so, push down firmly, make your cut. And what you can do is just take the drywall, snap it back, and then cut it from the back side with your blade. Okay, very simple. Now we're going to take it and we're going to measure the other way. And we had a it was seven and a half, so we're going to make it a little bit smaller, say about seven and three eighths. Get a few lines there. Do the 
same thing, scar it, turn it over, cut it back. Okay, now you've got your piece of drywall that's going to fit right in there. Nice cut. So what we want to do, before we do that, we need to have some wood backer in here to back up. So our hole's about seven, so we're going to cut a piece of scrap that we have. It doesn't have to be exact or anything. We're going to cut it about four inches longer. We have two inches on each side. Okay, now you can cut it with a skill saw, hand saw, whatever you have available will work. Okay, I'm going to just use my hand saw here because probably a lot of homeowners don't have a skill saw. Okay. Now that we've got both these pieces cut, I'm going to take some drywall screws. I like to use inch and five eighths coarse drywall screws. Put your backer in. And when you set your screw, don't countersink it too deep. You want to try not to break the paper. Just countersink it enough to get you some mud in there. Okay. <laughs> Do the same thing on the bottom. Okay, now you've got nice support, nice backing in there. Now what you want to do is take and place your piece of drywall patch in there. All right, so now that you've got that in there, what you're going to do is you're going to take your mesh tape, you're going to cut your portion. Okay, now at this point what we do is we're going to take our mud pan, put a little bit of mud in there, a little bit of water. Okay, we're back. We mixed up some mud. We made it kind of thick. You can see it's about like a thick milkshake. At this point, we're going to take and spread some on. What you're going to try to do is put it on as thin as you can, but try to cover everything. And don't worry if you don't cover it on the first time, you can cover it the second time. More than likely, it won't cover on the first time. You're probably going to see the mesh tape, but don't worry about it. Just keep smearing it on there until you get it nice where you feel comfortable with it. Try not to leave a bunch of excess because it's just more sand and the more work you have to do later. Okay. Okay, there's a good thin coat right there. We're going to leave it and we're going to let it set for about 40 minutes or so and let it... Okay, it's been about 30 or 40 minutes. We're back. You can see our patch has dried pretty well. So now it's time to hit it with a light so the mesh will start showing through. So after you get it sanded, you can see it's not quite covering. But don't worry about it. You're going to skim coat it. Okay, as you can see, we're looking pretty darn good right there. So we're going to let it dry, probably about 30 or 40. Okay, we're back. It's been about 30 or 40 minutes. It's dried pretty well. And uh, thanks for coming back and watching us how to patch a large hole in drywall. I think what we're going to need to do with ours is just light sand it, and then I think it's going to be ready to be primed and painted. Okay, you can see it's pretty, pretty nice. I think ours covered enough at this point. You would either texture it to match your texture on your walls, but if you didn't have texture, this would be the time where you primer it and then you paint it to match your walls. And don't worry if it didn't quite cover, you can just go through step number two again and just skim coat it really lightly, let it dry, and then light sand it. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for supporting us. And if you come back in a week or so, I'm going to make another video. It's going to show you how to put texture on. We're going to cover four different types of texture. Thank you very much for coming and seeing Barker Enterprises.